Mission Soledad, like uh, so many of the other missions of California, were founded by the Franciscan Order. Mission Soledad was uh, one of those sites uh, that was selected in part because of the agricultural viability of the area. It had a very checkered history insofar as its uh, ability to sustain the site. And ultimately, a flood uh, literally washed away the church, destroyed much of the potential of the site, and through the course of the 1830s and 1840s, uh, the secularization was a process that pretty much devastated the site, and it ultimately fell into ruin after the 1840s. I was contacted by the uh, Mission Soledad uh, Restoration Committee. Uh, they would like to rebuild the uh, quadrangle or convent compound. I always combine these efforts, and I turn them into collective efforts with my students. And what better way than to bring students right into the field setting, right into the lab setting, and do the work. Each unit is going to have their own little uh, stationary little buckets uh, of, contain of uh, materials, tools, and so on, cards, bags, each per unit, okay? And per unit, you're also going to have a tray. That's where you're going to put your artifacts. So what we're really interested in is anything that was either created by humans or modified by humans in some way. Uh, that, so in other words, artifacts. Uh, Ruben uh, put me in a, posi in a uh, position to be a crew chief, uh, and it, it's a little different from, from the past uh, uh, past semesters. I've, I've always been one of the students out there in the hole, in the dig. Each unit has the, the little line level, and that's how you level out the ground. My crew is, motivates me to continue uh, to work harder, uh, make sure everything runs smooth. Uh, Ruben has always you know, given me uh, another, a new task, a challenge, and that motivates me to do even better. And I'm just happy there and there. Uh, I, I just like to put a little tape over it once it has dried and seal as tight as I can. Our strings, right? Our level lines? Yes, to, to, the, to the level two now. Level two. Yes. Uh, objective, level two. Objective. Every two? time, every time you go into your new unit, it's a new, new level, new, uh, yeah. new objective. So the level and the objective are the same. Then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just uh, you know single digit. Just within the last couple of months, literally, this whole thing has come together. As I was wrapping up the Royal Presidio Chapel project, we moved straight into this project. And because I have students who have worked with me at prior sites, I have students that can assist with coordinating the crews here. Check it out. <laughs> the excavating itself, that, that just drives me, it's, it's really fun, you know, when you're out there just digging, you know, you're like, you know, what, what else is there, what can I find? And you find the, the artifact and you want to know the history and the story behind it, and uh, that's when Ruben comes into place, you know, he tells you what it is, and you're like, oh, wow, you know, I found this, you know. Oh, you never. It involves the community. There's other aspects of service, uh, and it's the dirty part, it's, and it's fun. So um, yeah, it, it just helps them to get closer to their, the history of their location. And they ask you little questions about, you know, uh, what are you guys doing? And you tell them, and then they ask, oh, how can I, you know, can, you know is there a way I can volunteer? Uh, in addition to doing the archaeology, we're intending to do open houses for the public, tours for the public, and so forth. But we're also assisting with the cleanup and documentation of earlier collections acquired on the site, uh, which they hope to bring into the museum setting. And by cleaning those, uh, better documenting them, and providing images, photographs, and the like, you know, we hope to help them with the mobilization on the museum. I hope he gets his motivation from us students, you know, that he continues to put on these projects uh, for students to learn. I have had some very dedicated students. In fact, some of them are on this site today. Uh, and what they've taught me is to have hope uh, in, in each successive generation and, and the interest and the desires of students to learn. See, this would be an interesting area to work because of the, the Native American workshops that have been in this section. But uh, I guess the question is, is how much of it's still intact? 
My uh, motivation for studying the California missions uh, is born of my own uh, indigenous and Hispanic heritage, and I want to understand that. And as I study these sites, as I excavate them, as I help conserve and engage in historic preservation efforts, I literally experience what my ancestors did. It's like I'm opening up a Pandora's box of my own heritage. I do believe these are spiritual places. I do believe that they're sacred. They were sacred for uh, whether it be the friars, the Franciscans, or the earliest uh, Native Americans who came into these sites and gave of themselves to help build them. Uh, they are spiritual in that sense. But I see it also as something uh, transcending simply a religious spirituality because uh, I also look at every brick in these buildings as having been made by a Native American or by a mestizo or by a European who contributed to them and their fingerprints are in them, their handprints, their footprints. It is literally a, a repository uh, of those moments uh, in, in people's lives. Thank you.